99.9% of Unreal Engine Blueprint door tutorials break the moment you have doors with multiple sizes. Or worse, they force you to replace every single static mesh with a blueprint actor. Here's a better way. A single modular tool you place next to any door, pick it, set its values, and done. No replacements, it works on any size and you can do it under 15 minutes. Let's get started. So let's go to content drawer. Let's go to our folder here. Let's go to blueprints. Let's click on blueprint class and let's select an actor. I'm going to call this blueprint rotating door. Let's open this blueprint and let's add the first component which is a sphere collision. So if you click here under components on add and search for collision, you will find sphere collision and two other types. So let's add that and let's call it sphere collision so it's more descriptive. Now, this sphere collision have the sphere radius setting and we want to change this setting when we add our blueprint to the level. So here I'm going to click and add this blueprint here. Right now there are no settings to change the radius so we can start with that. Let's go to the construction script Let's click on the sphere collision actor to add it to our blueprint editor and let's search for set sphere radius. Here under component sphere set sphere radius, click on this and connect the execution pin here. Now we have the value here in sphere radius is set to zero. So now if you compile and save, you will see the radius is gone. So we want to set this to another value. Let's say the default value will be 300. If you compile, take a look. Now this is set to 300, which is not a bad amount for the radius. Let's click and drag and let's promote this to a variable. And let's call this sphere collision radius. Compile and save. We will not see the value yet unless we turn our variable here into instance editable or make it a public variable. Technically, they are the same. So if you click on the I button here, this will also make our variable instance editable. Now, if you compile and save, let's take a look here. We have the sphere collision radius. We can now control this to whatever value we like. Beautiful. Now, let's go to the event graph and let's remove these events here. Let's click on the sphere collision and we want to add the events for this on begin overlap and on end overlap. So when you click on this actor and scroll all the way down to events, you will see here on component begin overlap, click on the plus button here to add it. And you can click on the sphere collision again. You can click now on component end overlap but let's say you don't want to scroll all the way down. You can also right click while you have this selected because context sensitive will help us. And here, add event for sphere collision will be the first thing we see, collision. And then we can click on component end overlap. So these are now the two events we want to add to our blueprint editor. Every time we say we want to animate something with blueprint, so in 99% of the scenarios, we want to add a timeline. So if you right click and search for a timeline, you scroll all the way down here, we will see the clock icon here. Next to it, we have a timeline. We can give this timeline a name. So let's say door timeline or actor timeline, just give it a name. And when we start overlapping with the sphere collision, we want to play that animation. When we leave the sphere collision, we want to reverse the animation. Okay, that's one. Two. We want to output a value from here that we can input in the rotation of our door on the Z axis, the yaw. And for that, we need a float track. So to add any type of track to your timeline, you simply double click and here you see track, add. There are multiple types of tracks. Here we can click on float track. Let's add that and let's call this, for example, alpha. The animation will play in the length of five seconds. So this is the time and this is the value. I want for the length to be, let's say, one second. And I want now to add two keyframes. So if you press F, by the way, you can focus your selection. And let's now add the keyframes by right clicking, then actions add key to curve float. Right click again, add key to curve float. 
Let's select the first keyframe, set the time to zero and the value, keep it at zero. Let's select the second keyframe, set the time to one, the end of the animation, and let's set the value to one. So we can multiply now one with any other value we like to determine how much the door will rotate. And instead of, let's say, we want to open at 90, you can still add the value 90 here, but this will be hard coded. So I like to have the value of one. Now, if you press F, this will focus the keyframes here. This is a linear animation here based on the line we have. So we can change the key interpolation by selecting the keyframes, right click, and here key interpolation, you can set this to auto. This will be now curvier. It will start slow, it will speed up, and it will slow again at the end. Let's go back to the event graph. And here you can see that we have a new float track that we can multiply with other values to determine the animation. Let's say we want to have the ability to select an actor from our blueprint that we can rotate. So let's go back to the blueprint here. Let's go to variables and click on the add variable here. And let's call this something like actor to rotate. Let's change the boolean here to another variable type. You may want to set this to a static mesh actor. So if you search for static mesh actor here under object types, static mesh actors, object references, and let's make this into a public variable, compile and save, and let's go back here. Now we can pick the actor that we want to animate. But earlier, I was doing tests with twin motion exporter. I exported a door and here, this door does not have the pivot in the corner. It has it in the middle, but in the corner, we have an actor that is called hidden object for rotating doors. It's a long name, I know, and it's set in the corner. So this actor here is not a static mesh actor. It's just a simple actor. And I want for my blueprint to also include such actors. So when this is a static mesh actor, we cannot select that empty actor we talked about. But if we change the variable type from static mesh actor to an actor, we can select almost any type of actor. So simply search for actor, select object types, actor, and select object reference. And now we should be good. Let's click on actor to rotate and let's get this. And from here, let's search for rotation and we have multiple types of rotation. Spoiler alert, I will choose set actor relative rotation now and then I will show you later why I'm going to choose set actor rotation instead. So let's go with set actor relative rotation for now. And relative rotation is the amount of rotation of this actor relative to its parent here. But if this actor is not a child of any other actor, which is also can be one of the scenarios in your project. So in your project, you may have such setup or you may have such setup. So when you export anything from Twinmotion, 100% you will have parents and children, but when you are exporting from your tool of choice, maybe your meshes look like this, where they are separate from each other. And again, I want my blueprint to include all sorts of setups, and I want to show you some mistakes I've done or some little errors and how we can fix them so you learn blueprint in the best way possible. Let's go back to our blueprint here and let's connect the timeline update to our set actor relative rotation and this is the rotation value. So here, X, Y, and Z, we want to separate these. And you can do that in two ways. You can right click here and split the structure pin, which is one of the ways, or you can click and drag from here and click on make rotator. Now we have X, Y, and Z. They are all combined together. They can give us a rotator that we can connect here. So we want to rotate the door on the Z axis. And remember the value we have in our timeline is one. So we want to multiply one with the amount we want for the door to open. So in this scenario, we can click on add a new variable and let's call this something like open amount. And let's set this to a float. So it's a number and let's make it into a public variable. Now let's bring our open amount variable. Let's get it. And from the alpha here, let's click and drag and we want to multiply one with whatever open amount we have here. So click and search for multiply, connect this to A and connect this to the second value and connect the result to Z. Now, open amount is set to zero. So if you multiply anything with zero, we're gonna get zero and the door will not open. But if you set this, let's say to 90, when you multiply one 
to 90, it will open 90 degrees. And when the door is closed, when we reverse the animation from here to all the way to zero, when you multiply zero with 90, the door will be totally closed. Now you know. Click on compile and save, and let's go to our level here. We need to select an actor to rotate. So click pick actor from scene, click the actor you want to rotate, click on play. And now if you get near, this will open the actor 90 degrees and if you get far it will close it as we just discussed so let's say we want to set the open amount to minus 90 this will open the door now minus 90 all right very nice so this works perfectly if all of our doors were on the x-axis where they had no rotation but what happens if you click these two elements rotate them like so and click on play now you will see how the door will snap to zero and it will open at 90 degrees. This is because this door here isn't a child of any other actor, so the relative rotation will be treated as world rotation. So it will go from zero world rotation to 90 or whatever value we set. So if you want to fix this, you want to select the door panel and make it a child of the frame. Now if we click on play, it works perfectly it works very nice but as i said we want for our tool to include as many scenarios as possible so what if i have too many doors 10 doors 50 doors whatever and i don't want to make every single door a child of its frame i want for my setup to be like this in that scenario we need to modify our blueprint just a little so let's go to our blueprint and we want to get the door initial rotation the panel initial rotation and we want to combine it with the rotation animation so here's what we're going to do we're going to get the actor to rotate let's get it and let's get the actor rotation so click and drag and search for get actor rotation and we want to promote this to a variable and set it at the start of the experience, at the start of the game. So click and drag from this rotator, promote it to a variable, and let's call this something like initial rotation. Now we want to get event begin play because we want to set this value when we start our experience. So click and connect this here. And now let's get our initial rotation. And let's click from the return value here and let's search for combine rotators. A to this, B to this. Connect these two here, the result. And now if we take a look, this will work just fine. Okay. Now, there is one final modification we need to do because if your elements were always like this, that's perfect. But there will also be scenarios, maybe your door is a child of the frame. So having now the relative rotation with the initial rotation will cause us some problems. So click on play now. As you can see, we have some weird snapping. Interesting. So to fix this, all we need to do is to remove set relative rotation and change it with set world rotation or just set actor rotation. So set, let's search for rotation and click on set actor rotation. Connect the new rotation here, connect this here, and that's it. Let's compile and save and let's take a look now. Click on play. It works. If I decide I want to separate this from this, it also works. And yeah, that's beautiful. If you're enjoying this and you want to go beyond this tutorial, check out my Unreal Engine Advanced Blueprint course. With over 200 lessons, it's designed to save you months of trial and error. You can learn more from the link in the description below. So let's say there are two more settings you'd like to add. For example, the playback speed of the animation. Maybe you want to make it faster or slower. And maybe you want some delay. When you leave the collision, you don't want for the door to close immediately. Okay, that's easy to do. So that's the beauty of Blueprint. The moment you start learning about some nodes, you can combine things and you can just be creative as much as you want. So let's go to the construction script and let's start with the playback speed i'm going to click on my actor timeline i will click and drag this let's get it and there is a node called set play rate under components timeline you will see this here and if this is set to zero there will be no animation that's going to happen the default is one so let's set this to one and let's click and drag to promote the value one to a variable and let's say 
timeline play rate okay and make this into a public variable as well and let's compile to make sure it's one so now if i click on play the same animation speed but if you multiply one with a value smaller than one this will make the timeline longer so now let's click on play and the play rate now is half the speed okay and we set it to two now it will be double the speed so that's regarding the play rate one is the default value 0.1 then it will be 10 times slower so now you know regarding the play rate the other setting we want to set is some sort of delay and that's very easy to do so when we end overlap we can click and drag from here and search for the node delay we will find it and here we have duration so we can click and drag from here and promote to a variable and let's call it close delay duration and let's set this to a public variable as well and now let's say this will be three seconds let's click on play let's get near it will open let's get far and now it's counting one two three and it will close so i think this will make the experience nicer in general to have a small delay instead of closing immediately you can now use this tool on all types of doors just please remember to set the door to movable because if you set it to static click on play you will get errors okay so make sure the door is set to movable and before i go if you have any questions any requests let me know in the comments what type of lessons you want to see in the future i really hope you learned something new you learned something useful and i hope you've enjoyed the lesson if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe share with a friend i'd really appreciate it as always thank you so much for watching stay hydrated and i will see you in the next one take care Thank you.